We are this studying. Current. We are studying. Uh -huh. Current. We are studying. He. He. Takes flying lessons. He takes talking. Takes. 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 Okay, complete the sentences with the present simple or the present continuous. Use the present continuous when possible. Please, your microphones. So, in this case, I say he's taking flying lessons every Wednesday evening. Is it possible to say he takes? Okay, because it can be part of a routine. But it, but as we have here, use the present continuous when possible. This is a current situation. Okay, this is a current situation. He is taking, it is the same as the number two. We can say we study or we are studying. But we are trying to use the present simple as much as possible in this exercise. So sometimes, please turn on your microphones when you're not participating. Yes, microphones off when you're not participating because I can't. Excellent. Hi, Felix, please, could you turn off your microphone? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Don't forget, participate and mute your, mute your microphone. Yes. So as I was saying, present simple and continuous sometimes are interchangeable. I can say I live in Paris or I am living in Paris. I study English. I am studying English. Yes. So as the exercise, exercise says, use the present continuous when possible. We are trying to use it more than usual. Let's go with number four. We say, where do you go or where are you going? Where do you go? Where are, where are you going? Mm -hmm. For example, your mom is getting ready. You say, mom, where are you going? No, mom, where do you go? Mom, where are you going? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, your name. Don't remember. I don't know. Don't know. Perfect. Yeah. Don't remember. Impossible to say I am not remembering. Impossible because remember is a state verb, like understand. We, we at the moment, we are. We are living. We are living. Very good. We are living in Morocco at the moment. She. Spanish for her new job. She, she is learning. She is learning Spanish for her new job. Excellent. And we to live yet. We are, not, are not wanting we, or don't want. We there don't want. Don't want. We don't want. Oh, I repeat it here. We don't want. Impossible to say one thing. Why? Because it's a state verb. Exactly. Want, remember, understand. These are state verbs. Impossible to use it in present continuous. Yes, don't forget. Impossible. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Now, let's do a little bit of a speaking. And here we have a list of languages. We have two, four, six, eight, ten languages in total. Look at the list of the ten most spoken languages. Which do you think are the top five? Put them in order. So, which one is the most spoken language? Number one. The second English. spoken language. English. The, English. the fourth. The fifth. Oh. So please send your list, send your top five in the chat. Yes, I want to see your top five. You can decide, maybe you think Russian is the first place. It depends on you. Or maybe you say German. Or maybe you say English. Just your top five. 
please write in the chat. I wait for you. Two minutes. Yes, two minutes. Two minutes to do this, this activity. In the chat, don't forget. Top five, top five. Yeah, let me put it here so I can set the, the clock. Okay, time's up. So let's go to the chat and see your answers. Okay, what's your top five? I will call some of you. Okay, we have top five. Mayra, please. Okay, what's your top five? Most spoken languages. Yes. Um, my in, in first place for me is the English. Um, the second place. For me, it's Spanish. <laughs> I know that I I wrote, but okay. And um, the third, uh, for me, be the Chinese. Uh, fourth, uh, Japanese, and the last one, five, uh, five, no, fifth, uh, Russian, uh, Russian. Russian fifth, excellent. Thank you, Mayra. Let's see. Okay, Jessica share some of some ideas too. Okay, Jessica, what's your top five? My top five is English, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, <laughs> Japanese. Japanese. It is Russian. Russian. Mm -hmm. So we have English, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, and Japanese. Okay, let's listen to Natalie, what's your top five? My top five is English, Spanish, Chinese, Portuguese, and German. Okay, different answer. Uh, we have also a lady, Demon Bluey. Who's Demon Bluey? Please, can you tell me your name? Because I don't remember it. Demon, Demon, one, two. Okay, continue with Jeffrey. What's your top five, Jeffrey? Number one, English. Number two, Chinese. Number three, Spanish. Number four, Hindi. And number five, Russian. Okay, yes, you are 
close to the correct answer. Close, close. Eh, Alberto, what's your top five? Sorry, Eliberto. Wait. Uh, my first choice is Chinese, then Spanish, English, Hindi, and uh, Japanese. Japanese. Okay, thank you, Eliberto. Uh, let's see. Mauricio, please share your top five. Okay, this is for me. The most popular language are Spanish, English, French, Chinese, and Japanese. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, from the list, don't forget, we have Russian, Japanese, Hindi, Bengali, Arabic, Spanish, English, Portuguese, German, and Chinese. And let's listen to Felix. Okay, we finish with Felix, and then we see what is the top five. Okay, go ahead, Felix. Um, okay. Um, me este mi more lenguaje mi more lenguas eh, number number one Spanish number two English number three France number four eh, Russia Thank ah, you. Russia excellent okay the country is France the language is French I am from France. I speak French. I speak French. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your ideas. So let me tell you, recent study says that the most spoken languages are first place, Chinese. Chinese is the first spoken language. I speak Chinese. Chinese is in the first place. So see your answers. See if your answers are correct. First place, Chinese. Second place, Spanish. Can you believe? Spanish. Third place, English. Fourth place, Arabic. None of you said Arabic. Arabic. And the fifth is Hindi. Okay, Hindi. This is a top five from recent studies. Chinese, Spanish, English, Arabic, and Hindi. Okay. And thanks for sharing your top five. But actually, Chinese is the most spoken language. After Chinese, is Spanish, our language. Then English, then Arabic, and then Hindi. So let's continue. Yes, let's continue. Let's continue. Let me see where. Here. We have three questions about languages. Okay, please, lady. It is, it is lady. No, it is not lady. It is Lily. Lily, please, read question number one, question number two, and question number three. Which language do you speak? How well do you speak them? What other language the people speak in your country? What language are you learning now or planning to learn in the future? Why? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So which languages? The, the singular is language. The plural, languages. OK? Number one is, which, lang which languages do you speak? How well do you speak them? What other languages do people speak in your country, here in Peru, in Ecuador, in Argentina, in your country? What languages are you learning now or planning to learn in the future? Why? Useful phrases, for example, I speak Spanish as a first language and English as a foreign language. I am a native speaker of Spanish. I speak English quite well, or I speak English fluently. I can read Portuguese, maybe. I can read 
Russian, I can read Japanese, I can read Korean, I can get by in maybe Spanish, maybe English. I speak a few words of Chinese. I speak a few words of Korean, of Japanese. Okay, use these expressions in your answers. Yes, let's think of our answers and then I call one volunteer per question. One volunteer per question. I really want to know what languages do you want to study apart from English. Maybe you want to study French, maybe you want to study Portuguese, etc. etc. Okay, two minutes to think and your answers. And then I call for some volunteers. Let me send the questions in the chat. Okay, there you are. Okay, time's up. So let's see. Okay, some volunteers to answer question number one, question number two, another person, and another person, question number three. Please try to use the useful expressions. Yes, I speak, I am a native speaker of, I speak quite well, fluently. I can get by it. I speak a few words off. So let's see, please, if you're a volunteer, raise your hand. Who is a volunteer for question number one? Question number one is, which languages do you speak? How well do you speak them? Who says me? Eliberto, okay, Eliberto. Try to use useful expression, yes? Which languages do you speak? How well do you speak them, Eliberto? I speak Spanish and English. Uh, I speak English very well and Spanish too. Excellent. Thank you, Alberto. Good answer. Anytime. Okay. Second question is, what other languages do you speak in your country? What other languages do people in general, not you? What other languages do people speak in your country? Apart from Alberto, is there another volunteer? Okay, Felix says, I speak 
two languages, English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Felix. And for example, in our country, Peru, what other languages do people speak in Peru? Apart from Spanish, apart from English, we have a lot of languages in Peru. Jeffrey, go ahead. Uh, other languages, for example, native language, Quechua, Aymara. Very good. Do you speak Quechua or Aymara? No. No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Very good, Jeffrey. Yes, in Peru we have Quechua, Aymara, among others, right? Aymara in Puno, okay, interesting. I've never heard someone speaking in Aymara. Could be really interesting to listen. And the last question is, what languages are you studying now or are you learning now or planning to learn in the future? Why? Why? What languages are you learning now? You can say, I speak or I am learning English right now and I am planning to learn Portuguese and Korean. I am planning to learn German. I am planning to learn French. Maybe you want to learn French. French is easy. French, what else? I'm planning to learn. Can be French, can be Japanese. See, Eliberto is raising hand. I think he's a volunteer. Eliberto, what languages are you learning now or planning to learn in the future and why? Um, I'm learning Italian and I'm planning to learn French, Portuguese, and if it is possible, also German. German. Do why? you know some words in French? Exactly. Why? Yes, why for French? example, comment allez-vous, très bien, et toi? Come see, come oh, Merci. Um, merci vous plaît. Oh, uh, excellent. Things like that, right? Yeah, we can uh, really... In Italian, in Italian, I know some words only. For example, uh, can you teach us? I don't know Italian words. Well, not very well. I'm just learning, right? Uh -huh. uh, the numbers are uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. Excellent. Well, I in love French, when in, in, in French you have on the track right? Yeah, we we on the track said we that's why because I love languages. You love languages and you are going well. Okay, you already know a little bit of French. You're also learning some words in in Italian, congratulations. Uh, and, and in German, I only know how to say good and marking. Another language. Which is good morning. Uh, in, 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 in German, I know how to say good morning, which is good morning. Yeah, exactly. The pronunciation is kind of different, right? Good morning. Right. Good morning. Wow, excellent. Congratulations, Eliberto. And thanks for sharing with us your knowledge. You're welcome. Excellent. Okay, another person. Maybe you know Korean, you know who knows Chinese in the class. Nobody in the class, another language apart from uh, English and Spanish. Maybe you know some uh, words, the numbers in French. It's, it's good to share with the class. It's good to share. And well, thank you for your participation here. And Lily, okay, Lily, what are you planning to study in the future? I see your answer here in the chat. Could you share with us, please? Is Lily here, one, two. Okay, maybe problems with the mic, it is okay. No problem. Okay, now we have already finished with this part. Let's go, no, let's submit that. And let's go to the last part of our class. Yes, this is the last part. Let's talk about genealogy. 
What's genealogy for you? Any ideas? Look at the picture. Yeah, where you come from. Exactly. It is where you come from, related to your family, your ancestors, your grandfathers, grandmothers, etc. Et so here we have some words related to family. These are adjectives. Let's match the adjectives with the correct definition. Okay, let's match the adjectives with the correct definition. And I have it here. So let's start with a life. What is a life? A life. I am alive. Not dead. Not dead. Exactly. That is a life. What is awake? Awake. Not awake. Could be another option. It is not. Not sleeping. Not sleeping mm -hmm. is awake. Mm -hmm. Asleep. Not awake. Not, not awake. Not gray. Not, not awake. awake. That is not asleep. Awake. When you are oh. not awake, when your eyes are closed, not awake. Ill. You are ill. Not healthy. Not healthy. Not, not healthy. healthy. Not, healthy. Not, not, healthy. Not, not healthy. Alone. Not with other not people. With other people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not, not with, with other, other people, people alone. Afraid. You know about a situation of. You know what? Afraid is actually frightened. Frightened. I am frightened. It is the same as I am afraid. These are. Synonyms, okay? That's basically the definition of a phrase. Glad. Oh, I'm so glad you are here. Happy and sad. Happy and pleased. Mm -hmm. Aware. Similar. Similar. A life no. similar. Knowing. Knowing about a situation or fact. You are aware of something. You know something. Mm -hmm. For example, I look alike my Sila. mother, for example. Now, let's do this activity. Which sounds better? The adjective before the noun is sentence A or the adjective after the B, sentence B. Please, Jeffrey, could you read number one, A and B? Number one. Uh... Uh, I, my alive grandfather live in Germany. Letter B. My grandfather is alive and live in Germany. Okay, good job. So which one sounds better? A or B? B. My alive grandfather lives in Germany or my grandfather is alive and lives in Germany. Alive is an adjective. The adjective goes before a noun. Always before a noun. So this one is better. Uh -huh. My alive grandfather lives in Germany. Okay, it sounds better when you place the adjective before the noun. Let's go to number two, the same here. In this photo, the children are asleep on the sofa. In this photo, the asleep children are lying on the sofa. Which one sounds better? A or B? What do you think? have the adjective and we have a noun. That is the correct order. So you find this of this order in A or in B? In B. Which one is the adjective in B? 
asleep. Asleep. And the noun? Children. Good job. Children is the noun. So always, the adjective before the noun. So we have adjective and noun together. Yes. Now, working pairs or we are working as a group. Yes. Think of a person in your family. It can be your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your uncle, your aunt, your cousin. Depends on you. Describe them using as many adjectives as you can. You can use alive, ill, glad, awake, alone, aware, asleep, afraid, alike. To describe your family member. Just one. Okay, you can talk about my brother. For example, my brother uh, looks like my father. He is always alone because he's shy, etc. etc. Okay, describe one person in your family and use adjectives. Try to use the adjectives that I show you here. Please write in the chat. Okay, I'll give you one minute and then I ask some of you to read the description of your family member. Yes, the description of your family member. Okay, time's up. It is okay if you have written just one sentence with one adjective, maybe two adjectives. It is okay. Please send your examples. Okay, send your examples. Oh, it is okay, Lily. Don't worry. The activity is to describe a person from our family. For example, your mother, your father, and use these adjectives. For example, alone, alone. My sister is always alone because she is shy. I'm using alone and shy. These are adjectives, okay? And I am describing my sister. That's all, that's what you have to do. Okay, that's what you have to do. So let's see who is raising hand. Felix, are you raising hand to share with us? Uh -huh, very good. Okay. Okay, Felix, go ahead. Uh, I I sleep. I sleep. Um, I sleep uh, in in house. Um, my grand grandmother and, and me preparing in coffee. Okay, thank you, Felix. Thanks for sharing with us. Is there another one who can use these adjectives in a sentence? It is okay. Okay, it is okay. There are not examples. So thank you, Felix, for sharing and. Okay, try to use, try to create your own examples with the words here, because when you create your own examples, you remember the vocabulary. Yes, you remember the vocabulary. So let's continue with a short text and we finish with this short text today.
It is a reading. The reading is about uh, genealogy. Yes. So I need two volunteers to read the text. Please raise your hand if you're a volunteer. Just for readings. Readings. Okay, let's start with Lily. This one is for Lily. And then Eliberto, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, so Lily number one, Eliberto number two. The English word genealogy comes from two Greek words, gen for generation and logos for knowledge. It refers to the study and families and their story. More and more people are now researching their own genealogy. The desire to find out who we are and where we come from exists in all cultures. It is about keeping our family history alive. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lilian Eliberto. Okay, this is a text about genealogy. And tell me, do you agree with this information? Do you agree or you disagree, maybe? What do you think? Because it says, the desire to find out who we are and where we come from exists in all cultures, everywhere. Everyone wants to know, okay, about what, where they come from, about their ancestors, right? So, do you agree with that? Do you think that all people is interested about genealogy or not? Let's see who's raising hand because I listen to someone raising hands. Nobody's raising hand. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, Eliberto, what do you think? Do you agree or do you disagree? Uh, I agree, although many people are not interested in, in knowing that nowadays. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Okay. In my case, I am really interested in genealogy. I really want to know about my ancestors, who or where they come from. Maybe they come from another country and they sat here in Peru. I don't know. That's what I want to know about my genealogy. Maybe you are not interested. It is okay. What about you, Jeffrey? What do you think? Um, yes, I agree, because it is important to know our family and uh, where we, we uh, where we come from. Very important, right? Because as in the last part of the text says, it is about keeping our family history alive. Okay, if we know about our genealogy, we keep our family history alive okay maybe some of you or maybe your family came from another country do you know that or they are from peru all of them someone in the class families from another countries for example i have some students some students um, their families come from china and they are here in Peru. They are Peruvians, but they look like Chinese people because their ancestors came to Peru many, many years ago. So the genealogy of these people is where? In China. Someone in the class has relatives or family from another country, ancestors from another country. Who in the class? Maybe Lily, where your ancestors come from, Lily. Or Eliberto, do you know where your, your ancestors come from? Uh, well, if I remember correctly, my mom told me many years ago that my grandmother was from Spain. Okay, so you have a Spain blood. Uh, and her last name was Fernandez. 
And Fernandez is a Spanish last name. Spanish last name. Yeah, you are right, Eliberto. Good. So maybe Eliberto knows about his genealogy thanks to your mother, right? Your mother told yes, you. Exactly. Excellent. Good job, Eliberto. Another person in the class, maybe your parents told you that your grandfather came from Korea, came from Japan, came from Colombia. Jeffrey, what about you? Uh, I know I have family in China, but I don't know them. My great grandfather was from China, but he didn't like to talk about his family. Wow, interesting, interesting to know that. Thanks for sharing, Jeffrey, yes. Okay, so genealogy is always interesting to know where we came from. And thank you. That's all for today's lesson. Thanks for coming. And also thanks to the students that participated during the lesson. Okay, I know that as much as you participate, as much as you learned. Okay, let's say goodbye for now. See you on Friday. Our Friday is our last class. So don't be absent. Yes, let's say bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank Take you. Care.